Hello and welcome to my new series where I do real-time drawing. It's going to be with a purple sharpie. I was requested by some of my subscribers to do a sharpie and ask them what color and they told me to do purple and don't mind any of the random sounds you hear around me. You might hear uh, some lawn mowers and people mowing and you know all kinds of racket but uh it's just going to be me, you, sharpie and piece of paper and I'm just going to talk about completely random things, whatever comes to my mind. Um, no, I'm not going to try too hard with this. I'm just going to have fun. You know, it's just relaxing. You can draw along with me. Uh, you can just watch while I draw. You can just listen. You know, it's all up to you. There's no pressure with this. And uh, this is just going to be a doodle. Um, with my doodling, I don't really think too much about it. I just kind of, just kind of do whatever. So, no pressure. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, I'm just going to make a line somewhere. Just some completely random line. But, uh, yeah, today was a pretty good day. I didn't have to work very long, and, uh, I went and got new paper. And this paper that I'm using here is, uh, it's like this brochure, presentation paper. And it's got a glossy finish to it. So it's super smooth, and I guess some nice smooth lines with it, but uh, yeah, I don't even know what I'm drawing right now at this point. Um, I guess it's smoke or something, but uh, eh, no biggie. can always go back and add some other things to it later. You know, after all, it's just a doodle. You know, it's not like it's a, that big of a deal. I'm not worried about trying to make everything perfect, but um, yeah, I could not sleep last night. I had a lot of things in my mind. It wasn't anything bad, but I was just thinking about completely random things. That tends to happen to me at nighttime when I'm trying to fall asleep. I get all of my ideas and things I want to do and, you know. All of my creativity seems to come at me at night time when I'm trying to sleep. Uh, what should happen during the day while I'm awake and not laying there in bed at you know, 3 in the morning? Trying to fall asleep. I'm trying to fall asleep and I'm just laying there. And, and then it gets to the point where all I'm thinking about is, you know, hey, I've got to I've gotta be up for work here and like... Two hours, and uh, I just continue laying there. And eventually, I get frustrated from uh, not being able to fall asleep, and then I just start watching some random videos on YouTube and start watching other artists and see what they're drawing. But um, I had someone ask me if I watched my own videos, but uh, I, mean, I watch them sometimes too. You know. Just see how my drawing's going, or what I can improve in the drawing or my videos. But, uh, but yeah, I watched the video plenty of times during editing, so I don't really see the point for me to watch them again. I mean, I've already watched it once the entire time I was drawing it, you know. So it's like if I do it again, I don't really see the point. But uh, yeah, most of these series are just going to be completely random. Um, Whatever comes to my mind, I'm just going to say, within reason, obviously, but, uh, yeah, I'm just stippling right now. Make it look a little bit realistic or something. Just so it's not only lines in this drawing. No. But, uh, but yeah, I'm glad you guys are here watching, and, uh, like I said, if you want to, you can draw along. You can draw what I'm drawing, or, uh, you draw whatever you want. You know, it's no pressure. It's no big deal. I'm gonna try and make a masterpiece every time you draw. I mean, it wouldn't be fun if uh, all you did the entire time was you know, worry about if you're trying to get everything perfect. Sometimes I just like to doodle, not worry about things, and kind of get my mind off of stuff because. Spend enough time worried about you know bills and 
all working and everything and then the one thing I always remember like I remember this late at night I'll be laying in bed trying to fall asleep and uh, while I'm laying there um, trying to sleep I uh, I remember like wait a wait a second I hear something and uh, it occurs to me that I have to take the trash out and uh, so yeah I don't know why but while I'm recording this the screen doesn't turn off I thought I had, I'm pretty sure it was set to where it would turn off after so long because I think my battery is going to die really fast so if you see randomly in this video like all of a sudden it just cuts to where my arms just disappear and then all of a sudden I pop back on the screens because the battery might die and I can only record in 30 minute intervals because I'm using my DSLR so yeah there's that but um it's no big no big deal this charge the batteries anyways but um there's got to be a setting in this camera where I can fix that where I don't have to have the screen on I don't know why the screen is staying on it doesn't turn off so I tried to fix it right now and it still doesn't turn off but well what is this looking like to you so far I don't know what it is I don't even know what I'm drawing half the time and I just just draw things. If you're hearing a, a creaky sound, it's my table. You can hear that. Sometimes it drives me crazy while I'm drawing, but I eventually just forget about it and it doesn't bother me. I used to not like stippling because it just takes so long, but I don't mind doing it now. I don't know if you can hear the birds chirping, but uh, I went to get up this morning and well, actually I woke up before my alarm went off. I tend to do that all the time. My alarm will be set and then I'll be laying there and trying to sleep at night and then I always wake up like 30 seconds or sometimes five minutes before my alarm goes off and then I I don't know it's like I'm like I'm awake but then the alarm goes off and it startles me and then uh, I, don't know, I don't know the word for it. I wouldn't say I'm scared it's just uh, I guess startled is the only word I can think of for it uh, yeah, I guess these are clouds. Doodly clouds. I had to get new lights for my umbrella lights because I had to call Amazon up and I told them I was like, these lights I have, uh, the two of the bulbs work fine, but the other one, for some reason, it kept making some buzzing sound. So I thought maybe it was something that had to do with my outlet. Um, maybe it was the circuit it was plugged into. But uh, I tried the other one and the other bulb was doing the same thing. And so what I did then is I uh, tried on a different um, one of my umbrella lights, like the little stand for it. I'm not really sure what you, I guess it would be like a stand thing. And um, so I tried the other one and it wasn't doing it and that one had a 45 watt bulb in it the bulbs that are in the other umbrella lights that I have that use my videos there are 105 watt bulbs <laughs> oh excuse me my nose <laughs> but anyways there are 105 watt bulbs and uh, they're a lot brighter I don't have to increase my ISO and all that that much in the camera so things are like cleaner but anyways, as I was talking about, um, I, I tried the other one, and the 45-watt bulb 
was not making a buzzing sound or nothing. So apparently it was uh, definitely the bulbs. So I, I told Amazon, I called them about it and they went in, they're going to be, no, well, they've refunded me and I'm going to get some different bulbs. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to get the same ones again because uh, the bulb that I'm using now in this umbrella for this video is actually a different brand than the other two, even though it was all together in one set. I mean, I would think that they would make it the same brand, but um, I don't know why it's a different brand. So much to wonder. No, I wonder. I wonder, bread. Actually, um, something I'd asked somebody today was, why is evaporated milk called evaporated milk if there's still some in the can? Um, but yeah, I'm going to be getting the new bulbs in uh, about, I don't know, maybe a week, two, I'm not sure. Whenever. I, I'll probably do it here soon because they're, that bulb's going to drive me crazy because I wanted to use that bulb for this video, but that's okay. Just using this one for now. It's a 45 watt bulb, but it'll work for me. So what I'm thinking here with this is, uh, uh, I see clouds. I'm thinking of something a little bit landscape-like in this. What do you think? And if you're drawing along, how does yours look? What do you, uh, what are you making? Because I don't even know what I'm making. Most of the time I don't. It's just, uh, whatever my hand wants to draw, it just draws onto the paper. I mean, unless I'm trying to do a portrait or something, then you, know, you can't really do that because then you get deformed faces and noses and stuff like that. And then, then people just don't know what's going on in your drawing. So. I want to draw more cloud things all over. Like I said, there's uh, no pressure with this. It's uh, it's whatever. I'm not too uh, too worried about the final result. Sometimes when you're drawing, you just gotta relax and not worry so much about uh, what you're drawing. Just have fun sometimes. You know, I think a lot of times as artists we get so caught up in trying to improve and we get so worried about the final result that we don't spend any time to worry about creativity and doing new things and trying different types of art because creativity is a very important part as an artist. It's I think creativity is more important than you know, trying to improve as far as your skill because it doesn't matter how good your skill is I think that if you have no creativity you're not you know you're not worrying about being creative that you're not going to make anything interesting and I mean I guess it depends unless you're doing you know hyper realism or something like that you know your goal is only to uh represent what it is that you're drawing but um if you're going to make artwork that's you know abstract you can't worry so much about every detail sometimes you just gotta let it flow and draw whatever whatever comes to mind whatever you feel like drawing and uh don't be so worried about the cost of like the supplies you don't have to have the best supplies that are out there so uh no, if all you've got is printer paper and a ballpoint pen, then it's no big deal. It's fine. I've done a couple of drawings with ballpoint pens. I think they work great because I had been doing this style of drawing with them, and it's kind of like scribbling. I just uh, kind of scribble all over the place where I think things should go, and then uh, no, then like that's that pretty much, and then. 
I just go from there during the drawing. What was I even talking about? You ever get to talking about something and then mid sentence or while you're talking just completely forget it? I, I do that a couple of times. I'll go up to someone and I'll start saying a sentence and then I just completely forget what I was even going to ask them or tell them. And then I'm just standing there staring at them and they're like, what do you want? And then and it's kind of just awkward, but yeah. If you have any drawings you'd like me to critique or to take a look at, just go ahead and send them to me. You can send them to my email I have uh, on my, to my bio, or my about me on my channel if you go there. Just go ahead and send me a image of your drawing and I can make a video telling you what I think of it. And if you want, I can tell you some things that you could work on to improve. But anyways, as I was saying, completely random things. I used to drink coffee, but I always drink decaf coffee. Because I've tried to drink the regular coffee and it made me way too hyper. And... I just want, like one cup of coffee would keep me awake the entire day and then I would never be able to sleep at night and then I just end up getting insomnia or something and I can't sleep for a long time and I end up sleeping all day and staying up all night <laughs> I guess I kind of had that last night or the past week because I've been working on a lot with my channel updating things and I was kind of up late working on stuff, so I guess my body just got used to you know, that, that pattern and that cycle of staying awake. Yeah, it's kind of uh, looks like, I don't know. I want to add a little bit more um, earth-like, uh, organic, or um, kind of a... Uh, Hmm. Landscape look to this after I add a couple more stability dots. You know, what I like about Sharpie is that they're not expensive at all. And I like how I'm not so worried about if the tip of them gets damaged or if, you know, if they run out because they don't cost much. But one thing I do worry about while I'm drawing is as you're drawing with them over time, the tip of it does get to where it's no longer as pointy. And so, you can't make things as detailed anymore. And, uh, so yeah. I always wonder why the, um, Sharpies that, uh, with an ultra fine point, like like this one is a fine point, and yet it seems to be bold compared to other pens and everything that are out there. So many questions. But I remember waking up this morning and, uh, yeah, this is something I forgot to tell you. See, I do that often. I'll be thinking of something and I completely forget what I was talking about. But, um, I woke up this morning and the birds were chirping and it was four in the morning. I was so confused. I, I was, I mean, I had my blinds and curtains and down and everything. I was so confused. I was like, wait a second, is it 4 p.m.? I sleep that long because if I had slept that long it would have been like 14 hours I think for me to sleep 14 hours I'd have to stay awake for you know three days or something before I was tired I would be tired enough to sleep that long
Hmm. Debating on what to add after this now. Thinking about stippling a face somewhere into this. I'll draw like a face behind it somewhere. An eye or something. That's like when I'm doodling, I'll just kind of throw in random, completely random things. I don't even know where I'm going with it or anything. And then I get ideas as I'm doing it you know, of what to add and what to make. Um, but yeah, right now I'm just doing some stippling. Add a little bit of texture look to it or something. You know, I think it's one thing I have a difficulty with sometimes trying to find the right words to describe what I'm talking about. Because I have an idea or something that I'm thinking of that, um, hmm, I think I'm going to draw like mountains or something behind that. I'm debating. I'm not sure. Hmm. What do you think I should add? Usually when I don't know what to add, I'll just add another line beside a line or I'll add more dots beside dots. And I'll just stipple, keep adding detail while I'm thinking about something to add to it. What would you like to know about me? What are some uh, things you'd like to know? Is there anything you'd like to know? You can go ahead and, you know, go ahead and comment and ask me. It can be anything. It doesn't really matter what it is. I'll answer it. One time when I was a kid, um, this was when I lived in Florida. I remember one time I went to I got in, I got a kite and I went out to fly it, and it was really it, it eventually got really windy that day. And um, while I was in the middle of flying it, um, it got out of my hands and. But the problem was, is that day, while I was flying it, what I wanted to do was to see how much, uh, how high I can get the kite. And uh, so what I did is I took three kites and I took all the strings from those and I tied them together for this one kite. And uh, so it was uh, up there really, really far and the wind was blowing and it took it out of my hand and uh, <laughs> I remember it the little uh, handle for it like flew out of my hand and was flying across the field and I had to run after it try to catch it and uh, I wasn't able to catch it because it was just going so fast and uh, within only less than 10 seconds it was know a couple hundred yards away from me it seemed like and you know, that's another thing is when you're really young when you know, your concept of time and like your judgment of distance is so off and when you're young time seems to go by so slow it just takes forever I'll get back to that in a second but I didn't want to forget I'm trying to draw this face but anyways um, the kite kept flying away really far and uh, <laughs> I kept chasing after it trying to get it and uh, just kept going farther and farther away and eventually it did stop because it got caught in like a stump or something out in the field and so I was able to get it that way 
but if it wasn't for that stump, I wonder what would have happened to that kite. Probably would have just flew away forever. Kind of like I remember when I was younger, we'd, uh, you know, during birthday parties or something, I'd always wonder where the balloons went whenever, uh, whenever we let them go. I'd you know, let my imagination make up all this, you know, all these stories about what would happen with them. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we have so much imagination. I mean, I did at least. No, I always had a good imagination, I think. When I was younger, I did a lot more so. And uh, I'm trying to get that back. But um, I had quite the imagination. I, you know, I always asked a lot of questions. And it tended to kind of annoy my mom sometimes because... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say annoy is the word. She, she said I was ornery, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, I'd always ask why this, why that. I wanted to know the answer to everything. And I always did that when my, uh, back when my grandpa was around. And he did pass away some time ago, about 10 years ago. And, uh, I remember when I was younger and used to be driving the car and I'd keep asking why, you know, why are the why are the cows like that? Why do they make that sound? And uh as a kid I was always into I was into science and I kinda liked history a little bit. I was always really into science and learning about the planets and how all that worked. And, I know that when I was about six or seven, I think I was, yeah, about six. That's when I, I learned that, uh, you know, about different galaxies and all that and planets. And I think when I was six, six years old, I didn't quite know or understand that, uh, that there's multiple solar systems. I, mean, I knew that there was you know, those multiple planets and everything when I was that old, but then uh, they told us that there's multiple solar systems, and then I was so confused. I was like, I, I couldn't comprehend the scale and the size of it, and so I, uh, I remember I looked into it even more because I wanted to know the answer to everything, and. <laughs> I started asking my grandpa, uh, you know, why is the universe this big? Why is that? Why is... <laughs> and uh, he'd always tell me, that's just the way it is. Or he'd, he'd make up some story. <laughs> and my grandma would always give him a face because he'd make up this, these really, you know, funny stories that weren't even possible. But, uh, you know, so young that, you know, when you're that young, you're pretty gullible. And, uh, <laughs> I remember we was driving, and, uh, when he was driving by his, uh, pasture, and these cows uh, that were in the field, I asked him what those, what those, all those things that were in the ground. <laughs> he told me they were cow baddies, and, and I believed him. And I asked him why, uh, how do you get chocolate milk? And he told me, um, <laughs> different cows make different milk. I think every, I think every kid's been told that when they were younger. <laughs> I don't know whose face this is. It's a guy lost in the woods. I tend to like live in the woods pretty much when I lived, um, in Florida. We just lived in the middle of nowhere. It was like completely away from all of civilization and everybody. And uh, the one time when I lived in Florida, we, this one house we had, the driveway was about half a mile long. Oh, excuse me. But uh, the dirt. What am I? Hold on a second. I had an idea. 
and I tried to say something, and then I got confused. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. But anyways, as I was saying, um, the drive was about half a mile long, and I'd always run up and down it, because I did cross country in school, and that's how I practiced for running, because um, we were having a lot of issues and everything at the time, you know, getting around and you know, family issues, and so I would... Uh, and I just used the driveway as my track, and um, the center of it was, you know, a little bit higher. And then where the tire marks were from the car, it was kind of edged out, and it was all sandy there. But after a while, um, it did eventually become all sandy, and it made it a bit more difficult to try to run up and down the driveway and the nice thing about it is the fact that it was uh you know it was the size the length of the uh why did I say size I think I said size or I tried to say size because I was going to draw something and I, I got mixed up with it but anyways the driveway was about half a mile long and I, what I liked about it was that you know I could use that distance to know exactly how far it was that I was running and um, so when I did track I knew that this like the distance was right because I didn't want to you know have it off to where I think I you know I thought that I was running a mile a certain time and um, I was always pretty good at distance running and sprinting I was more so always interested in sprinting more than uh, distance running but I was good at both and um, the coach, our gym coach we had, he wanted me to try out for cross country, but I always had trouble with my grades, and so I was never able to go to any meets or anything, but I went to practice with them, though, and I ran with them. But most of the kids never wanted to run with me because I always ran so fast, and so, we would have to run in groups with other people and we would get assigned you know, different groups and uh, every time someone got assigned to run with me they looked kind of upset and they weren't happy about it because I took it serious and I, I tried to get as good as I could at it whereas some of them weren't uh, they weren't really focused on running or trying to get you know, really good they were just there to, mostly to hang out some of them and um so eventually, uh, those of us that you know, really wanted to get into running and wanted to improve a lot, we always ran as a group, and they always made me have to run against the seniors and everybody, you know, many grades higher than me. And uh, I think it, you know, the coach was testing me to try to get me to see what my potential was, and because um, there wasn't anybody in uh, my grade that was able to run as fast as me. Now, there's one kid at the beginning that he was able to run as fast as me, but after I practiced a little bit and I really got into it, um, I was way ahead. And when I was doing all this running, um, my family was really poor. We didn't have you know, hardly any money, so we weren't really you know, eating all that well. And... Uh, so it was pretty difficult to try to, you know, do athletic stuff when you don't really have the proper nutrition. Because um, I'd be, you know, really sore from all of it, and uh, I just wasn't recovering properly. I had a lot of, a lot of bad things going on, but um, I, I managed to push through them and overcome it. And I look back on it, and there was a lot of bad things that happened, but... Uh, you can't just focus on the bad thing. There's still good things that have happened in my life, even through those difficult times that I look back on and I reflect on it. And I'm pretty happy for all the things that I've overcome in life. But um, I remember one day uh, I was going to go to a meet 
and uh, I was invited. They told me I could go, and I was I was so confused, but I didn't say anything about it. But um, I knew that I, I couldn't go because of my grades. So I was going to go to the meet, and I, I show up, and the coach tells me that I can't run. And then I told him, why'd you tell me to show up? Because you already know to have the grades. And um, I, I was studying a lot. I always just really had a difficult time with school. Um, if I didn't have interest in it, I couldn't remember it or learn it very well at all. And even though I studied really hard and I tried my best, I'd stay over and I had tutoring and everything like that, I you know, still just struggled with it. And I, I mean, I, I did well at you no know, science class, but um, I really struggled with math and English class. I did okay with history because I had a bit of interest in it, but it wasn't until I was you know, after the age of, I'd say, after the age of 12, that's when I started having trouble with trying to remember things and learn. But um, I think a lot of that has to do with a lot of the things that happened. But now I'm just a I'm a doodler. I like to doodle. Keeps my mind off of bad things. Keeps uh keeps my memory active and keeps me creative. Hmm. I'm wondering what to add to this now. What does this look like to you? Hmm. I think I'm going to add. I'm just going to add a line here. And then it's going to be an arrow. I don't know why, but it is. Try and make this look like wood. I can't tell if it's running out or if somebody's in the driver beside me driving on rocks. Because I have all my blinds closed and all my curtains closed. Sometimes I can't tell. The other day I had my air conditioner on and it started raining. I didn't know it because I had my headphones on. And uh, all of a sudden I look over and I was like, what is going on? And... <laughs> My air conditioner was making all these funny sounds because of all the rain getting into it. I'm trying to figure out what I want to add there, but I think I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to let it go. I'm just going to, I'm just going to doodle. Don't know where that came from. Don't even know. Hmm. It's gonna look like water, I guess. Hmm. I think I've drawn a bit of, I think I've done quite a few drawings where it looks like something's coming apart. It looks like water and everything. But, uh, yeah, I guess this is one of my styles. But anyways, as I was saying about with, uh, cross country, um, I really got into it and I practiced a lot. And when I, I did my first run, um, this was uh, without no any practice or anything. I'd ran it uh, just under six minutes. And 
the coach asked me to try out for cross country and you know, as I said before my grades weren't good enough but um I had fun doing it anyways. I think I did eventually manage to get it my running time uh just under five minutes. The the coach told us um if anybody can run a mile under six minutes for that class, you automatically pass. And <laughs> the coach said that um, maybe a couple weeks or so, a week or two before I ran, no, we ran the first time. And um, it's kind of funny he said that, then not too long after that I, I ran that time. But I mean, it was not hard to pass. <laughs> gym class all you gotta do is just show up not that difficult though I did like lunch I think if lunch was a class I would have a hundred percent because I show up there always on time hmm hmm thinking Okay, I know what to add. I'm going to add some more stippling over here. I've always been drawing completely, you know, either with music on or silence. Never really had other people watching. I mean, this isn't live. It's already um, I'm recording it now, and I'm gonna upload it later. But uh, I've never tried to talk while doing drawing this thing. So. Starting to get used to it. I'm gonna add some little hatch marks here. When in doubt, stipple. And, uh, so yeah, that was my short story about cross country. Oh, I remember this time when I was running and uh, they had me try to run against this senior all the time. And he always went to state and everything. And uh, I remember one time <laughs> running and uh, I was really tired that day. I didn't get any sleep. And the coach wanted me to race him. And we raced each other. But uh, like the last lap, I just completely ran out of energy and I stopped. And I was, I was a whole lap ahead of him just about. And I just stopped and I laid down and I fell asleep. And when I woke up, it was kind of confusing because everybody was just, everybody was gone. I don't know why nobody didn't wake me up. I guess they thought I needed to sleep. I don't even know. <laughs> that does remind me a uh, funny story about <laughs> someone forgetting you. I, uh, I was really young and, um, I had to, uh, I think I had to do summer school because uh, my, I was having trouble with my grades so I didn't pass one of the classes. And my mom was supposed to pick me up at the post office. And that's where I went, where she told me. Me and her have talked about this story a couple of times and she always insists that, uh, that I went to the wrong location. But uh, 
I do remember going to the post office and I was sitting there waiting on her and a couple hours went by and she still didn't show up and uh, I did, I seen her drive by and I waved at her but she did not see me and uh, <laughs> she told me she thought I was at one of my friends but I told her, I was like, mom, I didn't have friends, I didn't have friends yet. Um, it wasn't until later on that year that I even had any friends. And, uh, <laughs> I just thought it was kind of funny that she just, I wave at her, she'd drive right by. <laughs> uh, I think it looks like splashing water or something. Um, hmm. I need to make these clouds here come like that there we go I want to add some little bit of variety to it there we go but yeah I had, I had some fun times uh, across country and uh, there's a couple kids that uh would ask me how I'll be able to run that fast. Like, what do I do? And, um, uh, if you hear a random popping sound, it's probably my knuckles or my back. Uh, oh, I had to stretch. But anyways, um, this one kid had asked me how I do it, and I told him, I explained it to him about it, and, uh, he misunderstood me. He thought that I, like, <laughs> He thought I had strapped weights to my ankles and ran, but it was just these ankle weights, but I quit using them because it, it made my ankles and knees hurt. So I would just, uh, I just run in the sandy part of the driveway and that helped me quite a bit to get better at running. I don't know if you heard my belly, because I'm hungry. After this drawing, I have... I made it yesterday. It's like this brown rice, and I cooked up some turkey, and... I mixed it together, and that's probably what I eat after this. I don't know what you would call it. Um, hmm. I, I make things a lot of time, but I don't even know what they're what the recipe is supposed to be called. So I don't actually follow recipes or nothing. I just, I take things that I think will taste good together and I don't, I've never really had a time where I go to make something and I, I think it's gonna be good together. I've never had a time where it doesn't end up tasting good. Um, like unless I burn it or something. I think the only time I've ever had that happen is when I was like, sleepy and I took like a 10 minute nap or something on accident while the food was cooking and I woke up and the food was burnt but that's like the only time I've ever had that happen but um but yeah I'm gonna eat that when I'm done with this and probably starting some more drawing after that do another doodle um and anyways about when I was in cross country, I, uh, I just kept practicing and running and running. My goal was to <laughs> to try to um, I'm not, I'm trying to have a hard time remember. Was it under five minutes or was it under six minutes? Because under five minutes would be really fast. Actually, I think, hmm. Yeah, so yeah, it was under, it was under five minutes, I remember correctly. Yeah, that's right. But, um, yeah, I even had to think for a second. But, um, but anyways, um, 
the one kid misunderstood me and he thought I actually would take, he thought I took uh, those 45 pound plates that you get at the gym. He thought I strapped those in my legs. They were just uh, 10 pound ankle weights. And uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff I did when I lived down in Florida was, um, I did a lot of stuff outside, so that's my exercise. I did a lot of physical work outside and you know, I didn't work on a farm or nothing like that, but uh, I just had a lot of stuff to do around the house, um, outside with moving things and whatnot that required a lot of physical effort. And through the process of doing that, it became really strong and physically fit. I don't even know what this has turned into, but, uh, hmm. hmm. I think, I need another triangle right here. Super crisp, straight lines. There we go. I was gonna make this into like a uh, mandala, but like before I started, I was thinking of that, but I just decided to make this a completely random doodle. For, I, for some reason, I have the need to make a circle right here. I don't know why. I continued trying to do cross country after that for for a couple of years, and I still just never had the grades. And um, yeah, it's unfortunate, but. I still had fun with it. So I'm gonna make some mountains here. Be like Bob Ross. There are no mistakes, only happy accidents. ASMR right there. Does that make you guys sleepy if I talk like that all the time? If I was just like, hello and welcome to my video. Today we're gonna draw with a purple sharpie. Sometimes I can sound like that, but not today. I have a little bit more energy today. Drawing, it always makes me relaxed, so when I make my videos, um, my drawing videos, I, uh, it tends to be after I finish drawing, so the, uh, audio sounds all ASMR relaxing and whatnot because I'm relaxed, and so I talk that way. This is what looks like a sun to me. I think I draw some some more lines. Doodle up some more lines. And <laughs> I also remember when I was in gym class or in cross country, I'd ask the kids that want to race me. <laughs> They'd say, no, you're crazy. Uh, 
I remember also when I was younger, my grandpa, he'd have the golf cart and I'd, I'd try to catch up with him. <laughs> I had these rabbits that was uh, around the park when I was younger and I'd always try to catch them. Even though they were so fast, they could try to run at them to catch them. I always told my grandpa I wanted to pick them up and hug them. No, obviously they wouldn't let me, but... uh. I tried anyways. I don't know what that is, really. <laughs> oh man. Hmm. I heard a door shut. Hmm. Thinking. What to add. More dots, as always. Many more dots. Yeah, that was ninth grade. I had a lot of things happen in ninth grade. A lot of life-changing things that happened. Um, I moved in ninth grade. I moved from Florida to Ohio. And that was a really big change. Um, I'm trying to want to make this dark here, kind of, but then have it go lighter in this corner. There we go. And I also had a, this one friend that he was in this, uh, I can't remember what it was called. Was it R-O-J-C-T or something like that? It was like this, I don't know. We had, they had this like really strict teacher and it was like boot camp or something. Cause I remember one time I was uh, doing cross country and uh, this kid got up beside me and started yelling and screaming. Like he was in boot camp. He's like, run faster. You better run faster. You have to run faster. Do it now. <laughs> I started laughing and uh, I just wanted to get away from him because it was really awkward. And uh, <laughs> so I just started running faster and he uh, couldn't keep up with me. And then, yeah. <laughs> I think they wanted me to, they wanted me to do a uh, ROJCT or whatever. I don't even know what you, is that what you call it? I think that's what you call it. I'm not really sure. I don't completely remember. Um, but uh, they were wanting me to join it, but I, I just didn't have any interest because I was already doing cross country and I was doing a lot of stuff as it is. Um, I was doing, you know, I had a weightlifting class and I was doing weightlifting and cross country and then I was running at home. I didn't see any reason to do another thing. I was already completely worn out after school. And, uh, I always do my running. After, right when I got done with school, I'd, I'd go home, I'd drink some water. I'd wait a little bit, and then, I was probably about an hour after I got off of school, I'd go out and do, I'd go do some running. And I'd run anywhere between mile to five miles. I usually would just practice running a mile and I would try to run it really fast and uh, as I said before I was always interested in sprinting but um, they, didn't, they didn't really have that there for some reason. They didn't really have short distance running. Um, some schools don't really but uh, they didn't have that. I mean they had like you know, the 40 yard dash you know, the football team does and all that. 
But um, I always had the interest in the 100 meter dash. And uh, I tried practicing the 100 meter and the 40 meter as well as doing cross country, but it just doesn't work out very well if you try to practice running, you know, one mile and three mile running distances and then trying to do, you know, 100 meter and 40 yard sprints. It's uh, very different running styles, uh, you know, distances. Sometimes when I'm stippling, I just kind of get lost in the stippling. I just keep stippling like nonstop. Kind of therapeutic at times. Yeah, I think I'm sticking with some stippling for now. That's working pretty good for me. I had a bunch of stippling all over. I also don't do it too hard because I want to keep the tip of the marker um, at a pretty decent point. I don't want to ruin that. Most of the sharpies I have are black and red ones because my favorite color combination is black and red and white. So I like the contrast of the black against the white. And my favorite color is red. So it all works out. Now also happens to be my channel colors, red, white, and black. Did continue doing cross country um, for a couple years after that, and when I moved to Ohio, I would run around the block. Um, I just I'd look online on maps and I'd check to see how far it was that I ran, and I just write that down and I keep a list and with me and a piece of paper of the distances I ran and uh, all the times and whatnot. <laughs> And I remember the first time I, uh, I tried to run in Ohio when it was cold and I, I just could not do it. Even to this day, I've never really been able to run in the cold. I, I see people out there running and it's, you know, it's like 10 below zero. I have like a really thin shirt on, thin clothes, and I have the running shoes to wear. You know how the running shoes got the breathable mesh at the end of it? Um, to help keep your feet cool. Well, they're wearing that as well. I mean, if I was running that temp, like that cold of a temperature, I'd have so much clothing on that I, I would just look like a giant. I would pretty much look like a giant marshmallow, just trying to run around, and uh, would not uh, be a pretty funny sight to see. And I did try it a couple times. It did not work. Um, I tried running and instantly my hands would just like completely freeze and they were cold and my ears were freezing cold and my head was freezing cold because there's this type of, uh, it's a problem I have, it uh, involves circulation to your hands. It's a disorder called uh, Raynaud's Syndrome and what it does is it affects your uh, hands and feet, most usually your extremities. And it makes it to where it's difficult for them to get circulation very well sometimes. And so, whenever I try to run in the cold, I, uh, my hands just completely freeze. And my feet are frozen, and then I can't run. And there's not really a whole lot I can do about it. Let's get like hand warmers and wear a bunch of jackets and everything, but then I just, I can't run. And... I haven't even worked out in like a year now. It's been a while. I need to get back into exercising. Cause I just don't. I don't feel as healthy from not working out. I don't have as much energy. And uh, definitely need to get back into that. I used to work out a lot. I was always into powerlifting, and I competed in that as well. Um, 
speed and sprinting. I've got all kinds of really random hobbies and poetry and whatnot. But uh, I think for now, we'll stick with talking about uh, my time with cross country. And uh, so what's, what's something that you liked about cross country? If you, anybody out there that's done it, what are some, what are some tips you have for running? Uh, any advice? You know, how do you improve? Any ways to run in the cold without wearing a whole bunch of layers of clothing and, and uh, being able to stay warm? This is a lot of dots. This is a lot of stippling. Well, it's not that many, I mean. Compared to what I usually do, I usually don't do this many dots in a drawing. I uh, mostly just do line art and then at the end I'll add dots and whatnot. Although it is difficult for me to talk and draw at the same time, but I'm going to give it a try again after this one and uh, keep trying to make art work and just have fun with it. The ones that I do for uh, real-time drawing aren't going to be as detailed as my other ones because, you know, as I said, I have, I'm not really able to focus as well. But um, I did have someone today that bought one of my uh, drawings. They had bought it, and um, it's on society6.com. She had bought. Like this little like purse or duffel bag thing, and it kind of you know it gave me some motivation to keep drawing even more, and I it, it wasn't for you know the income of or anything because it was a it's a little I don't really get much of anything from it because they take a portion of it but um, it was more so the fact that there's someone that appreciates my work and uh, sees you know beauty in it or they. You know, with that in their wall. That's something that I do like, is you know, I create something and to know that that person is going to have that in their wall and they're going to have to look at it every day when they wake up, when they go to bed in the morning. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a reminder of them of the work I put into it and all the stippling and lines and dots and everything. What's more difficult to use stippling or cross hatching? And if so, what are the reasons why that is? I think if you're someone that doesn't have patience, then stippling might more be more difficult. Because with stippling, if you get you know, one dot in the wrong place, it's not that big of a deal with, you know, if you're doing cross hatching, uh, if you've got a line in the wrong spot, you can really notice it because you know, it's a lot larger than a dot. So, I think I'm gonna go for a run tomorrow. Not too far, maybe just a mile. Cause I haven't really ran in a long time. Um, I think the last time I went for a run was maybe three months ago. And uh, I think I just ran, it was only two or three miles. Wasn't that far. You know that pain you get when on your sides when you haven't ran in a long time? <coughs> and like, it, your sides hurt really, really bad. I used to always have that problem. I always uh, got it when I ran in the cold, too. Like, my lungs were just so cold, but uh, if you go a long time without running, your sides hurt really, really bad. It's just so painful. Um, 
Excuse me. Oh, I'm yawning because I, I didn't get to bed until, oh, three in the morning, I think, and I had to work this morning, so you know, I'm pretty sleepy from that, but but still, I will do a doodle, I will do a drawing, I will still get something done, regardless. Excuse me for my nose, I got the, I got the sniffles. Like driving everybody crazy, the table squeaking. Mm. For tips out there for anybody when I'm drawing these clouds, what I do is I find a spot and the light's coming this way. And so I'll make the lines in that direction going towards it. I'll give you an example here. Um, right here, light's coming that way. So when I make my line, it's going to be like that. See, I'll give that look like there's a shadow there. Just some doodle tips for everybody. And add some. This paper makes funny sounds around the hand on it. It's a glossy paper. I'm hoping the next lights I get for uh, for my umbrella light isn't making noise because they're, the last ones were making this buzzing sound. I remember one time when I was younger, when I was doing cross country, um, I went for this really long run one time because there was um, some bad things that had happened and in my life and I wanted to get you know, rid of some stress and so I wanted to see how far I could run you know while the light was the sun was out and I ran up and down the driveway um, and I added it all up it was 56 miles and it took me it took me all day it took me all day I have to think really hard to remember how long it took me but it took me pretty much all day And I remember, oh, my knees were so sore after that, and I was so tired. I slept so long the next day. Man, yeah, running always really got rid of stress for me too. But uh, I'm just into drawing a lot more now. And after some injuries that I've had, I can't do a lot of things that I'd done before, and so now I just. Uh, I mostly just do drawing, doodling, abstract, do a little bit of painting here and there. But uh, mostly just doodling. And again, I'm sorry about my nose. I don't know why I have the sniffles. Think about adding. I need to add some dots there. I need more something over here more. It needs more. It's like dark here. But there needs to be more over on this side. I think it needs more dots along here. I think I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this like a triangle. A big triangle. And I'm going to step it this way. Because I want more dark dark area over on this side. I like to have a bit of balance in my drawings. I don't want just one spot to be completely all dots and to be a dark area. Depending on what I'm doing maybe, but uh, not for this drawing. Not today. Some evenness in it. I have the urge for some reason to 
draw another half circle. clouds hmm. what do you all think of that so far I think I'm going to add some more clouds here, but I'm going to have them come behind these other ones, like so. You might hear a train in the background. It's a train near where I live. I kind of made that too straight there, but it's fine. It's no biggie. No biggie. Let's do this. I'll take away from uh, make it so you're not looking there as much. You won't notice that little straight line. I didn't want that line that straight, but oh well. Oh well. Um, let's see what else. I feel like that. I'm going to do some more little doodly lines like that. How long has this real time been now? It's been pretty long. It must have been like an hour and a half maybe? I'm not sure. Just let me know if you like these type of videos. I talk about completely random things. Hmm. I know I want this background here to be mostly white with not any details in it there. Like that, and now I'm gonna make hmm. This looks like yeah, it looks like water again falling apart or something like a big splash of purple sharpie onto the paper. I feel like I need those triangles somewhere. I know where to put it. I'm gonna put a triangle right there. There we go. Now I have some stippling. I wonder what the biggest stippling ever done. Like how big is it? How many dots? 
many dots does it take to make the biggest stipple drawing in the world? I don't know if anybody else has this problem, but whenever I eat, I get really, really sleepy afterwards. Like, super sleepy. Like, I feel like I've been awake for two days. How sleepy I get. I don't know why. It's, it's not from eating too much carbohydrates either, because that, that will generally make you really sleepy if you're done, when you're done eating. But, um, I don't know. I tried changing my diet and it didn't really make a difference. Hmm. What do you think I should add? What are you thinking? If you were drawing this doodle, what would you add to it? Hmm. I think I need some darker lines over here. There we go. I might have some shadows behind this here. Like that. That's better. So what uh what sports have you all done? When you went to school, if you were in college, or if you're an athlete, what uh, what sports do you like? Or what's one you've, what ones have you, have you uh, done? But I just always like track, track and field. I think tomorrow I'm going to try a watercolor, a watercolor painting. Hmm. Let's see here. Yeah, time for a little bit of stippling. Just a little bit of stippling here. And uh, that was in ninth grade. Which is, uh, is the same time I was told you about the story with my cross country and all that. Um, during lunch, uh, I usually just sat outside for lunch. We had this like uh, big courtyard we'd hang out at, and uh, a bunch of kids always playing hacky sack and all that. And um, I always had trouble playing it because I would just I had horrible coordination. I could never get my left leg. To kick at the hacky sack. I just couldn't do it right. Like I could get my right leg to do it. Um, but I just could not get my left leg to do it no matter how hard I tried. And there's always that one kid that uh, he obsessively played all day hacky sack. It was impossible being like he'd pass it to you and you do it like 20 times. You do this hacky sack and then you drop it, then he'd be able to do it like 200 times, and you're like, okay. And then I remember, um, we had this big competition in front of the school where they had to race each other, and the coach called us out, and he said anybody th who thinks there's the fastest, um, spinner or runner, uh, step on up and, um, race. And it, this was for the ninth grade class, and um, a bunch of kids went down there to race each other, and I was the last one to go down, and uh, one of the, a couple of people said, oh, sit down. They didn't actually even know that I ran or anything, and um, so I had, uh, I had jeans on, and it was pretty difficult to try to run in jeans, and I, I didn't have any and I didn't bring shorts with me or nothing that day. Um, <laughs> so I go down there to race the other kids, and uh, the first, the first race, I came in first, um, 
and then we had no another race because it was like kind of like elimination and um whoever was the top three of each race went on to the next round and it kept going like that and it got down to where we were like kind of like the sem semi-final and um yeah it was a semi-final and it was me and some other people racing and i uh I came in second, but the reason I came in second is because I purposely let off some to save some energy for the final race because um, in the races before that I was doing just enough to stay ahead to ensure that I made it through, and then before the final one I just let off a little bit in the semi-final, so I had more energy for, for the final. And so um, I line up and uh, the other Two other guys, it was, uh, well, there was me and I think it was a total of six, six or eight of us lined up. I think it might have been eight of us. And it was me and four other guys that were, um, the main competition. And the four other guys I had to race against, uh, three of them. I didn't even know if I could even beat them because two of them, they were in track and, um, uh, no, three of them was in track, and one of those, uh, wait, now I'm trying to remember how many it was. Now I forget. You know, th there was three, three other guys that were really big competition for me, and one of them was not in track, and yet he was the one that everybody uh, said might be able to beat the other guy, and so... The race started and I ended up coming in third place. The guy that I had beat, he was just like a step behind me, like a half a step. I just barely beat him. And, um, but I think if I didn't have jeans on, it would have done better. I mean, I, there was no planning for this. No, I was never told that we we're going to race or nothing. Um, it was just out of nowhere, and uh, it's kind of unfortunate that uh, I didn't get to have no shorts on to race them, and had to run in big jeans and these shoes that were not meant for running in. And uh, I, I think I probably could have beat them, maybe, because it was close. So. Yeah, that was a long time ago. That was back in 2000. And five or two thousand six, because I moved. I moved to Ohio summer of two thousand six, and this race was, and just before. It was just before I moved up here, and it was before school's over. And uh, I remember in, in uh, it was our social studies or uh, history class we had. One of the kids was like, wait, was you one of those people, the guys that was down there was racing? I was like, yeah. And um, I, was, I was always really quiet in school back then. And uh, he was like, wow. And then, I mean, like I was kind of picked on and stuff, but not so much. I mean, at that point, it wasn't as much anymore because I stood up for myself. But, um... I was kind of picked on a little bit, but I just, I just mostly ignored people, and, uh, and then we had, I think it was in that class later on, a week later or so, we had, uh, we were doing something outside for, for history class, and I don't even know what it was for, but, um, we had to race each other, and everybody was like, I'm not racing you, there's no way, and, uh, I told them they could have a head start, and I gave them a head start, <laughs> and I was laughing the whole time because <laughs> they were trying so hard, and uh, I still caught them so fast, and I started laughing, and I could barely run, <laughs> but uh, they had some good times. When I think about it, I can't believe it was that long ago already. Man, that was... Huh. Twelve years ago already. That went 
one by fast. For now, I'm going to be old and wrinkly and I want to get some more stipply dots over here. I need some more something here. Yeah, it's better. This paper is not too bad. It's just too thin, though. I think I'm gonna get some. Once I use all these up, there's 250 sheets of this, so it's gonna take me a while to use this all up. But uh, once I uh, use this all up, I'm gonna go ahead and get some thicker paper. Like this is glossy. It works really good for marker. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing drawings, it spend more time on I don't actually even use a sketchbook I'll, I'll use um, you know some type of printer paper I'll get I'll try to find some archive archival stuff and uh, draw on that but um, I mean I, for sketchbooks I, I generally use those just for like ideas and things like that um, more than trying to draw anything too realistic although sometimes I will but not too much Is there any anything in this drawing that you see that I, I don't see? I see a face, clouds, arrows. Uh, guess you call them pyramids. This kind of looks like a spider web. There's a lake there behind it. I don't know why I had the urge to uh, draw all these like stipple. I'm not sure what type of lines these are. I guess it's the texture of wood that I'm kind of trying to make, but I don't know why I'm doing it because it looks like a gigantic planet beside this. <laughs> I don't know what any of this is. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in my mind when I draw. I have no idea. <laughs> Looks like we're on the home stretch though. The sun setting. All the birds are going to sleep. I do miss the sunsets when I live in Florida. Those are really nice. And this, I'm sure the summer was uh, terrible sometimes. It gets so hot, but you get used to it. Um, one thing is, it's really expensive to live there compared to where I live at now. I'd have to work so many hours, I couldn't really continue drawing. I mean, this is what I really like doing. And I don't want to have to just work a whole day and not be able to do anything else. I just, uh, I wouldn't have any interest in that. You know? Hmm. What do you think I should? Okay, I need to add a little bit of. What's it? Okay, I need a stipple right here. That's because it's going there. There we go. Stipple, stipple. But um, wait a second. I guess I could stipple that. Oh, I should have went there like that. It's a bit confusing. <laughs> I think this bar was supposed to be not stippled and that was, but oh well. Oh well. It's no biggie. No reason to worry. It's just the doodle.
These look like pyramids to you. The Great Pyramids. You know what? That's something I should draw sometime. I'm going to use black, black pen. I'm going to draw the pyramids. I think I need more, more dots here. But my uh, my season with running in uh, cross country wasn't that long because I, as I told you, my grades weren't good. So, so yeah, I think it was like officially me actually like, actually being in cross country to where you know my grades were okay. I don't, actually don't think my grades were ever okay. I think it just did, it was maybe a week to where I was actually in cross country because they had to. to uh, I don't know why, but for some reason they had to wait or something to check some grades or whatever for report cards to go out. And then when they went out, you know, a week or so after I had started, they're like, "You can't be on the team." But yet the coach wanted me because of my running time. I was like, "Oh well, well." Man, I keep yawning. Oh, um, I think I need a nap after this drawing. So I can wake up and do more drawing. What what should I draw with after this? I think I'll use a. Uh, a fine liner. That's what I'm going to doodle with. <laughs> doodle doodle stipple dot. Combine these lines and I get lost in thought. Doodle them up and tie them together like a knot. I shall doodle every day and I will not stop. I have so many things in my mind that I cannot explain. With all these doodles and doodles, the doodles remain. You know what I'm talking about? Doodle poetry. Isn't it strange they talk like that, like the way they talk back then? Well, hello there. Hello. I don't even know what their... <laughs> their accent. I'm like the Renaissance time. Thy shouth. How is thy ye? What is... What if thy jaws? Thy stippler. Thy shelf. I think it needs a little something here. More stippling. That's what it needs. It just needs more stippling. More dots. There we go. That's what it is. How long do you think it'd take you to count all the dots in this? And actually, the good question I ask is, if I take um, two dots, I put them together as one dot, does that make that one, like, as one dot? Or is it two dots, but it's still, you know, it's one. But if you were to count them, would it count as two? Just depending on how you're looking at it. Any more dots here. I like to have. I don't want to have a spot where there's not much detail, but I don't know. It's kind of kind of bothers me when a spot doesn't have any detail or really like that. When it's just out of balance. And if you're doodling along with me, how's your doodle coming along? What are you making?
I stipple really fast with a, I have this blue gel pen I use and uh, I don't have to worry about it like damaging it because the tip of it and it's like a really hard metal. So I just stipple really, really fast with it. <laughs> I need to add something to this face so it stands out more. I think it's kind of just blended in with everything. You don't really see it at all. Like a little bit of. Trying to add a little bit more detail to that. It's kind of a face that's just hidden, but it was hidden too much. I shall. What is. What is these stipples? How is. I think I'm getting close to being done with this. Wait, was I supposed to stipple there? Yeah, it's fine. I had to leave that part white, but that's fine. That's no big deal. Let's add some stipples. Why, well, hello there. Do you have, do you have any stipples? Stipples, I may stipple? I don't know why I'm so sleepy today. Because I got more sleep last night than I did the two days ago. Yet I'm more tired. <sighs> stipply, stipply. I think I had a couple little dots here and there for detail on this. What color marker should I use next time for this? Should I use a red marker, an orange marker, a yellow? I, won't, I, won't, I don't think I'll use a yellow marker because it doesn't even show up hardly. Because it's too light, you can't just can't see it on the paper. <laughs> hmm. I, I feel like it's done. You know when you get to a point in the drawing where you feel like it's completely done, but uh, you feel like adding more. I don't think I want to add too much more to this. I think, I think it's almost done. Because so I don't want to overwork this. I just want a little bit more detail. Let's add some there. I think we're almost there. Almost. We're on the home stretch. But there's no pressure, there's nothing to worry about. There's no need to get all worried about trying to make it perfect. Just doodle. Just have fun doodling. think so far I think I'm gonna add a little bit more but not that much let's see here I think this needs I don't want to add I want a little bit of this but not too much because I like how that stands out against those all those dots that are there That's fine. Now I need some stippling over here. Hmm. 
And what is your, what's your favorite artist? I think a lot of people were inspired by Leonardo da Vinci. Is it da Vinci or da Vinci? I'd forget again. Hmm. I think tomorrow I'm gonna make that stuff I made I had today to eat. I'm gonna think I'm gonna make it again tomorrow. It tastes pretty good. But the problem is I don't have any turkey. I have to go buy some of that tomorrow. Cause I have none. It's all gone. I ate it all. Hungry. You're trying again? That reminds me when I was a little kid, these uh, semis always go by, and uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd always like move my hand and gesture to where I was ask, asking them to honk the horn. I tried to do that the trains, but they were already they were already honking the horns. I just wanted to keep honking it more. Add a couple more dots, and I think, I think we will be finished with this doodle. Because I don't want to overwork it, and I don't need to worry so much about it being perfect. I just want to get a certain look to it, and that will be it. Hmm. Couple more stipples over there. But um, when I got into high school, I I, I didn't do track, but uh, I did eventually run um, the mile under my time. It took a lot of work because I was mostly just doing the hundred meters, and. Uh, I just barely got it, uh... Um. Oh, man. Uh. It took me a long time, I just barely got it under four minutes, and, uh... I, I tried so hard, I could not get faster than that, like, I would train as hard as I possibly could, and I would train, I would train, I would train, I would try over and over and over, practice and diet and exercise, like just doing everything right, you know, stretching and all that. And it took like an entire year, entire year of practicing, I would get, you know, maybe one second faster at most. And I think I, I kind of reached my limit at that, at that point. Um, but I mean, I could probably have improved quite a bit more, but not a whole lot because, I mean, I think that was a really fast time, uh, but I don't, I'm not, probably not going to try to run that fast anymore since I've had, you know, I've had you know, two leg surgeries and I just don't really, uh, I'm not going to risk injuring myself to try and run like that anymore. That was my chair. My square. <laughs> my chair is uh, pretty squeaky. I have to get a new one. I've had this one for quite a while, and I've had it since 2009. It's, yeah, I've had it for nine years. This chair, this thing's falling apart. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but uh, I actually have uh, a white sheet over it because the whole chair is just falling apart and. Uh, I just covered up because it looks pretty hideous and I uh, guess I'm ashamed. I should be ashamed of me for my ugly chair. I just, I want to get another chair, but it's uh, the one, the kind of chair I want to get is going to be an armless one. 
because the the corner table I have here, it, uh, whenever I turn with the, a chair that has arms on it, the arms hit the uh, tables and they're in the way. But I know what I want. I just gotta order it. I'm pretty frugal with when it comes to buying things. I don't buy anything until I absolutely need it. So I really don't know how this chair's uh, lasted this long. <laughs> it's actually a combination of two chairs because part of it fell apart and I had to combine it with another chair. And so I think yeah, part of it's missing and part of it's still there. So it's kind of a little bit of one part and another, but it's not new, that's for sure. I don't know what this face is supposed to be. Do you think I should, I think, I think I'm gonna add some shadows to this here. A little bit, maybe, I'm thinking about it. I don't think we will though. No, that looks nice. I like the that contrast with the, I think if I add lines to this here, it's not gonna look good because it's not gonna stick out. I like how, how do I explain it? You get the contrast there, it's a lot of contrast and it kind of makes it come at you. So I think I'm gonna leave it that way. I'll add a little bit more to this one. I'll be all for that part. I think that's fine, but uh, add some detail to the face here now, so I can finish this part up. Kind of the focal point of the drawing, but. I remember when I was watching the Olympics in 2008 when uh, Sam Bolt beat the record. That was that was very interesting and very surprising. I think I need some stipples over here. Stipply dot dot. Yeah, I need to add more of them right here by this. I think that'll look better. But, um, yeah. Always been running, always been into athletics, and uh, a lot of things transition and change in my life. You know, from one thing to another, it's not a whole lot you can do sometimes. Just go with what you have and not worry about the things that you can't do because all the time you spend worrying about the things that you can't do things are going to pass you by in life that you can do and so you have to be happy with what you have and the abilities that you have to do what you can with what you've got because all you've got is what you've got in the moment and you can't go to the past and change your past to be a different person I mean sometimes we think about things and we think you know if only I could go back in the past and change this, but we're looking at it from a negative point of view. We don't think to ourselves about the negative consequences of if we were to change that past, what what person we would be, you know, who would be who would we become in life, and um, what choices would we make, and how that would affect everything, you know, the, the friends that we have and the people we meet in life. And I look back at some things and, you know, if I was to tell another person about something, they would say, you know, this, that's all just bad, it's not good. Um, but I, I find good even when bad things happen. So it's all, you know, I think a lot of it's about your perspective and how you work with things that happen to you. And um, when it comes to goals and dreams and all that, for me, my dreams and goals, it's not something I tried to really find, it's just something that came to me. So 
or something that you love doing every day or you know it doesn't be something you do every day it depends on what you're doing so um if it's something you love doing and you find yourself doing it all the time and it's all you can really think about and that's probably something that you should pursue um, and if you want to make a living doing it find a way to make a living doing whatever it is that you have interest in but at the same time try to help other people in the process of doing that because if you don't then all you're really going to have is an ego and you know this identity that everything that you're doing is you know, based off of that ego and you have to let the ego go to become a better person to improve as an artist to improve in, you know, as a person in general if you're just staying the same person and not changing ever I think that could be bad because life changes, circumstances change and if you're stuck in the same ways and you don't try to explore new avenues of thought and philosophy and ideas about life and you know, then you're just gonna get caught up in the same path that you've taken before and then you'll ask yourself how did I get here and why am I doing this you know there's a lot of uh, time in my life where I could have spent more time drawing but I was you know pursuing other things if I look at it in the perspective that you know if only I had gone back and you know spent all that time only drawing instead of trying to be you know, doing powerlifting and instead of trying to uh, doing sprinting and poetry and all that other stuff. If only I had done this, you know, but I think that's a wrong way of looking at it. I mean, just think of, you know, like, say you had an accident happen to you and an injury and, uh, now let's say that there was a big conflict and they wanted to enlist you and, but then they couldn't because you're injured. So it just depends on how you look at things because something like that could happen and you wouldn't have to worry about that. You know, then that, that would save your life. But, you know, if something bad didn't happen to you, then you would get drafted and then who knows what happened from that point, so... You just gotta look at things from a, a different different angle. Look at a different view. Don't just look at everything in in only one perspective that you know, oh if, if something's not good you know, if something's not happening to me it's good right now in the moment or if you know if the, I'm not getting the results yet then you know why try? You know, if somebody else is better, why try? And that's just not the way of looking at it. Because everybody has to start somewhere. I mean, not everybody can be the best. Not everybody is uh, talented at the same thing. So a lot of different skills, but it's just a matter of taking what skill you have and using that, and incorporating it into whatever hobby and passion you have. You know, like some people have you know, a skill that doesn't line up with their hobby. You know, like for me. Um, something doesn't really line up with um, art, but I guess it is a form of art, would be poetry. And uh, I, you know, I had this idea of adding poetry to my videos. I'd, I'd done it in one video, but I wanted to do it um, some more in other videos and uh, see what I can make of it, you know. The art of poetry, poetry art. Not sure what you call it if you incorporated the two together into, you know, one style, but uh, I think it'd be interesting. Um, and I'm gonna try that sometime. I have other ideas of different sty art styles I want to do and make, and uh, just having fun sometimes. You know, because I I do some you know intricate and detailed drawings and patterns and mandalas and zentangles and 
I'm drawing portraits and trying to do realistic stuff that sometimes I just need a break from it to just express myself in a creative way, you know? And uh, this is one of the ways for me just to doodle, to get anything off my mind and just kind of let go. Sometimes people think, you know, why can't I stop thinking of this? Why, why is this on my mind, you know? Oh, I know that you get all angry and sometimes, you know, you just have to, you just have to let it go. And that anxiety and stress that's in people can really show up and, you know, how you're breathing and you know, if you're taking short breaths and you know, so on. There's, I think there's a lot connected between the body and the mind. If you're not, if you're not taking care of your body and you're only worried about your mind, then you're going to have problems just as if it would be if all you worried about was your, like if you only worried about your body and not your mind, you would have just as many problems if you only worried about your mind and not your body. So there needs to be a balance with that, you know. I, I, there needs to be a lot of balance with a lot of things. Um, too much of anything is bad. And if you uh, go through life thinking that you have to have the maximum of everything, then you, know, you might not be happy doing that. Sometimes what you think you want in life isn't going to be the thing that you actually end up enjoying. Something might happen to where you can't do that no more. And then you'll look back and realize, hey, you know, I'm, I'm glad that happened because I didn't want to actually take that path. Now that I see how things have happened, what's changed in the world, what's changed in me as a person, that, you know, if you end up doing something in life that you, know, you think you want to do, and then something happens, you can't do it anymore, and then you're all stressed and worried, and you, know, you can't live your life to your full potential for very long and then you're just attached to that moment those ideas and you can't enjoy anything else you know I mean have passion and push yourself but don't become so attached to something to where you know if something bad happens that you just you don't move on I mean I'm trying to think of the way to explain that I mean you can be attached you can have I think there's a difference between attachment you know, being attached to something and having a passion. Because if you truly have a passion for something, you'll let it go so for a short time. Take a look at it. Take take a step back. Because if you really love something, you'll let go for a minute, take a look, and see what you need to improve. See what you need to work on to... You know, if you're trying to get better as an artist, if you're trying to better yourself as a person, if... You know, things have happened and uh, you want to work on those things then uh, just just don't get so stressed don't worry so much about the things that you can't control in life because there's always so much you can control and the thing is, is people have this concept of time you know they they're always in a rush always, always so worried and and then things happen to them in life, and you know the things that uh, the things they go out and do, and they're always in a rush. And then you know, when the thing that they're you know, working on so hard, you know, it gets there, and then they can't enjoy it, and they can't. They're not in the moment of. They're only thinking about only the future, the only the goal, only the end result, and they're not worried about what they're doing in the moment, enjoying it. You know, sure, it's good to have goals, have aspirations to be something to to do something in life but if you're only focused on that end result like I said when it gets there you won't have the integrity to appreciate what you have and when it is there So, yeah, but uh, I think I'm done for now with this drawing. I had fun with it, um, something new, and um, 
I enjoyed it, but uh, <laughs> a lot of stippling all over and uh, really abstract, but uh, I had fun with it and uh, I enjoyed talking about some of the stories and things that have happened in my life. So if uh, you have any questions or anything about my drawing or my channel or any of my links, just go ahead and let me know. You can email me. I've got an email me in the About Me section of my profile. And if you want to see any of my other artwork, I have uh, got links in the description of this video. And I've, I've got to get a scanner to scan a lot of it so I can upload it onto those sites. And um, But for now, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll be doing more of these. Uh, it was fun. And hope to see you around, and see you in more episodes. Gonna gonna be making a lot more in this for the series, so thank you for watching, and don't forget to uh, you know have a good day as always, and uh, subscribe. Thank you, and good night.